Welcome, we're joined by Ambassador Nico Schemers of the Netherlands. We'll be discussing Armenia-Netherlands relations and the new embassy the Netherlands has in, in Armenia. Ambassador, thank you very much for your time. So since your appointment as ambassador to Armenia, I want to know how it's been like for you, what you think of the country and um, how you've settled into your role. Well, thank you very much in the first place for uh, having me as a guest in um, this program of, of CivilNet. Um, I have to say it's, it's been quite a roller coaster year for, for everyone last year, of course. Um, the government of the Netherlands decided in 2019 to open an embassy in uh, Armenia, Armenia being the last country in the region where we were not uh, represented yet. Um, and my intention was actually to arrive here already in June last year. But due to COVID re and, um, the, co the, the COVID situation in uh, Armenia and in the Netherlands, it, it was not possible to travel. Uh, so I arrived in the end, in uh, end of August. Um, that gave me the, the opportunity to meet a lot of um, Armenians in the Netherlands in, uh, in, in the meantime. So that was uh, quite an experience to get to know part of your diaspora and that is uh, of course one of the uh, the very specific um, characteristics I would say of, of this uh, country. Um, then in September I was able to meet the president uh, on the 23rd to present my credentials to him and therefore becoming officially accredited to uh, Armenia. But then the war started um, and that uh, of course um, yeah, changed my entire program. I mean uh, I was asked to set up an embassy here in, in the first months um, and basically that changed into reporting on, um, on the war. Um, I think my government was very glad that we had opened this embassy uh, just in time in, in that uh, regard because it also provided them with um, insight information on the, uh, the Armenian side of, of, of the, the, the conflict. Um, yeah, then in um, the, the later weeks, um, I was lucky to, um, uh, to, to find some fine colleagues. So as of January, the, uh, the embassy is fully operational. We have now local staff. I have a deputy. Um, so uh, in, in that sense, uh, we're settled in. Uh, personally, it's, it's more difficult in, in that uh, regard. Uh, I had hoped that my family, my wife, my children would have joined me somewhere in August or uh, otherwise in October or December with uh, Christmas, but due to, uh, to COVID that was of course impossible. Uh, so we're looking now uh, forward very much to uh, spring and summer in, in the hope that times have changed by then. So can you tell us a bit about this new embassy, how this was achieved, what was the process like to uh, establish an embassy in the country? Well, um, to be honest, uh, the process is um, far from finished at, at this stage. Um, we have uh, currently settled ourselves in, in the Marriott Hotel. Uh, we have a number of rooms there um, as a temporary location. Um, we are looking for a chancery in, in one of the office buildings in, uh, the, around uh, Republic Square. Um, and we hope to, uh, to sign a contract uh, there soon. But that is only the start of the process because then missions from the Netherlands have to come to, um, yeah, to, to uh, make all the arrangements inside the embassy to provide us with all the equipment that is necessary. Uh, so that is going to take a while. Um, I think what we have done so far was indeed recruitment of personnel. That was something we could do, uh, establish um, very trivial things as a local bank account um, to get telephones, etc. Um, you have to imagine, I arrived uh, on the, what was it, the 29th of August in the weekend, uh, not knowing anyone in this city, uh, which was in lockdown at the time. Um, uh, the embassy uh, in Tbilisi had arranged an apartment for me, and that was my, my home, my office, and uh, from there I had to find my way through the city. Uh, so that was quite an experience, but I have to say Armenia is a very hospitable um, country. Um, I made some friends in the meantime, I'm uh, meeting uh, many people um, and that uh, was promised to me already back in, in the Netherlands by the Armenian uh, society over there. Um, maybe a nice anecdote to, uh, to tell in that uh, relationship um, between Armenia and the Netherlands. Um, when I was visiting the, the diaspora groups in, an, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, I went at some point to the south, the southern city of Maastricht. Maastricht is um, the most southern city in the Netherlands 
and it's um, a Roman Catholic city. Uh, it was the first Roman Catholic city in the Netherlands and it was baptized in, um, I think, uh, or Christ, uh, uh, Christianized, is, uh, uh, Christ, christened in the um, uh, year somewhere between 347 and 384. Um, and it was uh, christened by um, a, so, uh, a person called uh, Saint Servatius. Saint Servatius. Uh, and this person was the first bishop of Maastricht and from there uh, Christianity spread uh, over the Netherlands. Uh, this Saint Servatius was a person who came originally from Armenia. So the Armenian diaspora in, um, in Maastricht is still the keeper of the tomb of St. Servaas, who is buried in uh, one of the cathedrals in the city. Um, it's an anecdote uh, not many Dutch people know, but uh, I was very um, glad to learn about it and, and uh, I try to uh, make this more known also in the Netherlands. And I'm sure many Armenians as well didn't know that. That's very interesting. I also wanted to ask Ambassador, obviously Armenia is in a state of military defeat, economic hardship, political crisis. Uh, what is the Netherlands doing to assist Armenia? Are there any plans for the future to get Armenia, to help get Armenia back on its feet? Well, one of the reasons for the um, Dutch government to open an embassy in um, Armenia was to support Armenia in it, uh, on its road to democracy and uh, basically in the aftermath of, of the Velvet Revolution of 2018. Um, so in that regard, we have a quite a, well, we have a substantial program uh, in terms of um, uh, projects we can finance. Um, uh, that was all done uh, through our embassy in uh, Tbilisi. Uh, from a distance, they had to focus on Georgia and in the slipstream, they also did uh, similar projects in Armenia. I hope that in, in the coming years, we can build up this program more robust, robustly and more substantially um, to support Armenia in its development. Uh, on top of that, uh, we have noted that um, there are uh, many private initiatives uh, from the Netherlands towards Armenia, again from your diaspora, but also from our parliament. Um, there is a lot of sympathy for the Armenian cause in the, in the Netherlands in that uh, regard. Um, so also these funds are being um, channeled uh, to Armenia. <clears throat> and what we also try to do is to link our uh, business community to the Armenian business community. Um, we have a couple of priorities in that uh, regard. Um, agriculture is the most obvious one. Um, we have a number of uh, agricultural companies from the Netherlands already investing here in uh, Armenia. And uh, well, the obvious example there is the potato. Um, at the moment you eat a potato, it's probably of Dutch origin. Um, all the seed potatoes, uh, or what is it, 80% of seed potatoes in the world are Dutch potatoes. And uh, also for the, the Armenian um, market, this is a big, um, uh, big thing. Uh, and again, this, um, there's an interesting story to that uh, connected as well. In 1988, there was an Armenian Dutchman uh, who wanted to help uh, Armenia in the aftermath of the, um, the, the earthquake. So he started this project by providing um, potatoes for, for Armenia. And then he decided um, in, in, in the years after to develop that into a commercial viable program, which, in, in which he succeeded. Um, but this is just one example. There are many other areas in uh, agriculture. The Netherlands is the second food uh, exporter in, in the world. So we hope also uh, to be able to, um, to work closely with Armenia, where we see a number of opportunities. The other sector is, um, of course, tourism and um, the ICT sector, the IT sector, um, where uh, we also have a number of companies interested in uh, working together with Armenia. On the humanitarian side, um, we are closely looking what we can do for uh, Ar Armenia as well. Uh, I want to mention that the Netherlands is not a country that normally gives a lot of humanitarian assistance to organizations like ICRC uh, in the aftermath of, of a conflict. We do that up front. So in the last two years, we financed ICRC with 85 million euros. Uh, to make sure that they are capable of immediately acting when, uh, when it is needed. 
Um, so it's not so visible uh, in, in uh, this particular conflict, but there's a lot of Dutch money involved in, in this uh, kind of organizations. And at the moment we have provided for an expert um, in mental health uh, for WHO. Um, and she is working here in Armenia to, um, yeah, again, to address the, the consequences in the, in the aftermath of the conflict. And are any steps being taken by the Netherlands and other European countries to help establish a peaceful settlement between Armenia and Azerbaijan? What is your opinion on this outcome uh, and what do you think your country could do to help? Um, yeah, this is always a very difficult question, of course. Um, it's, uh, if, if we had the solution, um, it, uh, the, the, well, the conflict would have ended already. Um, so I think um, the, the first thing to do is um, to, to uh, make sure that the ceasefire um, uh, holds, that both parties are, um, no, that emotions are basically um, getting out of, of, of the way to, to find solutions for a longer term uh, solution. Um, what my government is doing, we are uh, working very hard on the, on the EU side, on the OSCE side, uh, in order to get uh, the, the co-chairs of the Minsk group uh, in position to um, help the parties to find a solution in this uh, regard. And that is behind the scenes or the behind the, how do you say that? Um, behind the scenes, yeah. Behind yeah. the curtains. <laughs> behind the curtains, behind the scenes. Um, uh, th that is what, what uh, my minister is very active in. Mm -hmm. And um, with this new political reality uh, in the region and Armenia's growing dependence now on Russia, how do you see the country's uh, progress towards democratization and the implementation of the SEPA agreement between the EU and Armenia? Um, and what can the Netherlands do to help Armenia not deviate too much from this path? Um, a good question again. Um, that, well, the SEPA agreement, uh, I'm told it's nearly there. Um, I think it's now an internally a Brussels process or so uh, to, to get finalized. Um, we hope that it will be implemented soon. Um, of course, Armenia has been dependent on Russia in terms of security for a long time. In this part of the world, uh, that is um, a fact. Um, my country has never made uh, a secret of, of that, uh, that indeed that is uh, for Armenia a very important factor um, with which they have to live. Um, in terms of getting uh, yeah, or not to deviate from the SEPA path, um, I think that is up to Armenia itself. Um, the, the people of Armenia have chosen, uh, what is it, uh, three years ago. Uh, a new way um, and I think that uh, it's, it's up to them to see how they would like to continue on, on that path. Um, as long as they seek uh, the, the cooperation with Europe, uh, the Netherlands is there to, um, to help Armenia on its, uh, on its path, uh, whatever that path may be. And um, I think, I hope that the, um, the, yeah, the, the shared interests we have uh, will lead to opportunities uh, and that in itself is, is uh, helping Armenia. Well, Ambassador, thank you very much for your time and we wish you the best with your future endeavours. Thank you very much and um, well, I hope uh, to have a very interesting time here in Armenia. I wish uh, the Armenian people and Armenia a very fruitful 2021. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on Civil Net.